about to head off to go hike Pulpit Rock. Well, it's called Prakestolen in Norwegian. Uh, apparently, Prakestolen means pulpit. Pulpit being, which I didn't know actually. I didn't even <laughs> realize it was an English word <laughs> before this. Uh, apparently, Prake means sermon and stolen means chair or seat. So it's the place where a preacher delivers a sermon from. And apparently that's how it was named. Someone said that it looks like a pulpit. Shouldn't this be ready, ready to answer useful travel information that we asked for? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> anyway, it's one of the most popular hikes in Norway and also like one of the most iconic images of Norway. So we're super keen to do one of the really popular hikes today. Stolen or Pulpit Rock from Stavanger and on the way there's this re super long tunnel like I saw it on the map and I thought wow that's a, a long tunnel but didn't realize just how long so apparently this right fast tunnel that we're in is the longest subsea tunnel in the world um, and also the deepest well you some metrics Metrics. Oh, I don't have the metrics on me. Rifas became the longest undersea road tunnel in the world with its 14.3 kilometer length greater than the Tokyo Bay Tunnel in Japan. Um, so the, currently the world's steepest subsea tunnel reaching a maximum depth of 292 meters. Well, I, I gotta say, you're really bad at this. Like, yeah, what is the natural delivery of the fact as if you knew them? <laughs> That is the secret sauce to making ready. Because it uses blah 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 blah. blah. And that's why it's ready, it's not this. Yeah, exactly. Because I read that shit up, and then I deliver it as if I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just arrived, and. It costs 25 euros to park here. Yeah, that's it's a shocking amount to pay for parking. They, they're really milking the tourists here. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be empty, but there's probably like 40 cars parked here on a Wednesday afternoon. So the case. I'm guessing it will be much worse on, a, on when tourism is not in full effect. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, just be prepared. Um, the tunnel was free right now. There were no tolls. We can put a link on uh, as to where you check for tolls on a typical day and you can see what the toll cost typically is. But it's not a free hike. You've been not warned. <laughs> the trail starts off super steep. It can't be like this the whole way, right? Like it's four <laughs> kilometers. <laughs> This is actually a beautifully maintained uh, path. Possibly the nicest one we've seen in all our hikes in Norway. Mm. It makes sense, it's like incredibly popular. But even so, Norwegians are pretty rugged, so I expect like rocks and boulders and chains. And <laughs> I almost feel like it's upgraded for tourists. So. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it is like the most popular hike in Norway, I'm pretty sure. Is it the most popular? I think so. Okay. We'll have to fact check. Yep. <laughs> so we are at the red dot and according to this elevation profile the hardest part is about to start yay <laughs> We're gonna take this opportunity to do my my segment, the one everyone was waiting for. Even though I gave a lot of information prior to this, I still have a few tidbits of entirely useless information up my sleeve. So roll intro. Whoa. <laughs> right, 
right, so the the original name of Prakestolen is actually Hivlatona, or you know, however it's pronounced, um, which meant the woodworker's plains tooth or something like that. And the term Prakestolen was established in the 1900s when a gymnast of some renown was having a cruise on a steamboat along the Lisefjord, which uh, Prakestolen overlooks, and saw the, the pulpit rock and said, hey, that looks like a pulpit, aka Prakestolen in Norwegian, and hence came the name. Now, since then, given that this is incredibly popular with uh, tourists and Norwegians alike, the path has been developed a lot. Um, the parking area at the bottom has like a whole bunch of like cafes and a restaurant and bathrooms and all that. And uh, in the past 50 years, the path is getting better and better because of the hundreds of thousands of tourists that come to Paul Pitt Rock every year. Um, in fact, this, uh, I guess, landmark is so popular that it appears in a lot of examples of, uh, of pop culture. At the end of the second season in the series Vikings, you can see Ragnar Lothbrok sitting on Pragestolen overlooking the, the Lisefjord and the Mission Impossible Fallout, I believe, I think it was the sixth movie, I think the final fighting scene between Henry Cavill and, uh, and Tom Cruise was shot on Prakestolen for which they spent like nine days transporting tons of gear and hundreds of people up and down with helicopters shooting with these very narrow windows before the winter came. It was an absolute mission for them. <laughs> it was a Mission Impossible shooting Mission Impossible on Prakestolen. <laughs> 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 that, that joke entirely ad-libbed. Thank you. So we did read that there were spots along the way where you could go swimming and I think that this is one of them. Super close to the path and doesn't it just look incredible? I mean if it was warmer. There's another spot where you can swim. this path is and yet they have a railing like come on when we were doing Ulrich in last week we're, we're never getting these teeny little paths and there was no chain sure but where are you gonna hang your padlocks of fluff and fluffer <laughs> I'm sorry but both fluff and fluffer require acknowledgement of their love no isn't that if fluff and fluffer if you're watching us. We, we need to know your actual names and why you call each other Flat and Flatter. <laughs> These are adorable names. Almost at the top. Up. It was a really reasonable hike actually. It wasn't too hard. <laughs> we were very lucky to have been stuck here during this whole kerfuffle uh, because for 20 minutes or so we had the whole of Pulpit Rock to ourselves and usually it's just crowded. Um, but it is kind of terrifying sitting up there. So we were reading up that the rock was formed by glaciers over millions of years. And you can see this very visible fissure through the rock. And obviously, like, you know, you've got to go sit on the other side of the fissure. So in your mind, the, <laughs> the only thing you're thinking the whole time is this is going to be the moment. This is going to be the moment that it comes crashing down. <laughs> obviously, it didn't and we're fine. <laughs> anyway, it was it was spectacular today, like amazing. I should say 
that fissure will be the downfall of Pulpit Rock eventually, but geologists have been saying that it's fine, it's fine <laughs> right now. <laughs> at the car park and uh, after that we're gonna head back home and pass out it, it, it wasn't a hard hike but still tired. yeah I'm still pretty tired after all this um, and uh, but I can I can safely say that if you find yourself in the area pulpit rock is an absolute must if you can actually cope with the rocks and the mild clambering it's a great way to burn over 1200 calories that's right i'm gonna be so ripped <laughs> i can throw away my cheese grater because i'll be using my abs <laughs> before too long <laughs> <laughs> 